The American Civil War, a brutal chapter in the nation's history, left an indelible mark on the national psyche. The original Civil War saw brother fighting brother, and the land ran red with the blood of countrymen. It was a conflict born of deep divisions over slavery, states' rights, and the very meaning of union. While the guns fell silent over a century and a half ago, the echoes of that conflict still resonate today. The question lingers, could America ever see another such internal struggle? The idea of a second American Civil War, once relegated to the fringes of political discourse, has gained a disturbing traction in recent years. In this part six of the eight-part series, we will examine those states that were not part of the original Civil War. A second civil war. Various causes could be the flashpoint today in America. Political polarization, social unrest, and economic disparities have fueled a sense of division not seen since the tumultuous 1960s. But any examination of a hypothetical second civil war must consider the vastly different makeup of the nation today. The United States of the 21st century is not the same nation torn asunder in the 1860s. The addition of new states, each with its own unique history, culture and political leanings, adds layers of complexity to the equation. How would these states, absent from the original conflict, navigate the treacherous landscape of a divided nation? Would they align themselves with the ghosts of the past or chart a new course in the face of national crisis? To understand the potential impact of these new states, we must first understand their individual stories and the forces that shape their identities. After the Civil War, the United States continued its westward expansion, incorporating vast territories and admitting a host of new states. From the rugged mountains of the West to the sun-drenched plains of the Southwest, these new additions to the Union brought with them a rich tapestry of cultures, resources and ideologies. States like California, with its booming economy and diverse population, stand in stark contrast to more rural states like Wyoming, known for its rugged individualism and vast energy reserves. Each state, shaped by its unique geography, history and demographics, would bring its own set of strengths and vulnerabilities to a hypothetical second civil war. The industrial heartland of the Midwest, once a bastion of manufacturing might, has experienced significant economic shifts in recent decades. States like Michigan and Ohio, grappling with the decline of manufacturing and the rise of automation, find themselves at a crossroads. Their large populations and industrial capacity could make them valuable assets in a protracted conflict, but their economic anxieties and social divisions could also make them susceptible to internal strife. In the Southwest, states like Arizona and Nevada have witnessed explosive population growth in recent decades, fueled by a burgeoning technology sector and a warm climate. This influx of new residents has brought about rapid cultural and demographic shifts, creating a dynamic but potentially volatile mix. The region's proximity to the US-Mexico border adds another layer of complexity, raising questions about border security, immigration, and the potential for cross-border alliances in a time of conflict. The hypothetical scenario of a second American Civil War is a sobering reminder of the fragility of unity and the enduring power of division. While the specific triggers for such a conflict remain unclear, the potential fault lines are all too familiar. Economic inequality, racial tensions, political polarization, and access to resources. These divisions, exacerbated by social media echo chambers and partisan news outlets, threaten to tear at the fabric of American society. The new states, far from being immune to these national trends, often serve as microcosms of the larger challenges facing the nation. Their diverse populations, economic disparities and political leanings reflect the complex tapestry of modern America. In the event of a national crisis, these internal divisions could easily be exploited, pitting neighbor against neighbor and state against state. Alaska and Hawaii, the nation's youngest states, stand apart, both geographically and metaphorically. 
Separated from the contiguous United States by vast stretches of ocean and wilderness, they offer unique perspectives on the American experience. Alaska, a land of rugged beauty and abundant natural resources, embodies the spirit of self-reliance and frontier independence. Its strategic location, bordering Russia and serving as a gateway to the Arctic, would make it a prize for any warring faction in a second civil war. Control of its oil fields and potential shipping lanes could significantly impact the balance of power. Hawaii, a chain of volcanic islands in the central Pacific, evokes images of paradise and cultural diversity. Its history, marked by indigenous kingdoms, American annexation and a pivotal role in World War II, has instilled a strong sense of identity. In a fragmented America, Hawaii's strategic importance as a military outpost and logistical hub in the Pacific would undoubtedly make it a focal point of contention. Its distance from the mainland, however, could also foster a sense of isolationism or even neutrality in the face of a mainland conflict. The loyalties of these states, shaped by their unique histories and geographic isolation, are difficult to predict. Would they side with the faction that aligns most closely with their economic interests? Or would they prioritize their cultural identities and seek to forge their own paths in a fractured nation? The answers to these questions could have profound implications for the course of a second American Civil War. The mountain west, with its towering peaks, vast plains and independent spirit, presents a mixed bag of loyalties and potential flashpoints. States like Colorado, Montana and Idaho, with their strong libertarian streaks and traditions of self-sufficiency, might be hesitant to choose sides in a renewed national conflict. Their rugged terrain and dispersed populations could offer refuge for those seeking to avoid the fighting or serve as breeding grounds for resistance movements against whichever faction attempts to assert control. Wyoming, a state synonymous with energy production, could find itself at the heart of a resource war. Its vast reserves of coal, oil and natural gas would be tempting targets for any faction seeking to fuel its war machine. Control of these resources and the infrastructure needed to transport them could prove decisive in a protracted conflict. Utah, home to a large Mormon population, presents a unique case study in the intersection of religion and politics. Its history of seeking autonomy and its strong sense of community could lead to a desire for neutrality or even secession in the face of national division. The state's strategic location bordering several other states and home to vital transportation routes would make it a key piece in the geopolitical puzzle of the Second Civil War. The Southwest, a region characterized by its arid landscapes, burgeoning cities and complex cultural tapestry, would likely become a crucible of conflict in a second American Civil War. States like Arizona and New Mexico, with their long borders with Mexico and significant Hispanic populations, would find themselves on the front lines of a conflict likely fueled by nativist sentiment and anxieties over immigration. The militarization of the border, already a contentious issue, would be dramatically amplified in a time of national crisis. Nevada, a state synonymous with gambling and entertainment, could see its fortunes reversed in a second civil war. The flow of tourists and revenue that fuels its economy would likely evaporate, leaving it vulnerable to economic collapse, lawlessness and revolts. Its strategic location, however, and its potential as a hub for communication and transportation could make it a valuable asset for whichever faction manages to secure its allegiance. The Southwest's history of conflict, from the Mexican-American War to the Indian Wars, serves as a stark reminder of the region's capacity for violence and division. In a second American Civil War, these historical fault lines could easily be reopened, pitting neighbor against neighbor and testing the very fabric of American society. The role of Oregon and Washington State. In the midst of the conflict, the Pacific Northwest emerges as a crucial player. Oregon and Washington State, with their unique geographical and political landscapes, become pivotal in the unfolding events. Their strategic locations, abundant resources and distinct cultural identities shape the course of the war. 
As the battle lines are drawn, these states navigate a complex web of alliances and conflicts, influencing the broader narrative of the Second American Civil War. With their dense forests, rugged coastlines and thriving metropolitan areas, Oregon and Washington stand as beacons of resilience and innovation. Portland and Seattle, cities renowned for their progressive values and technological hubs, become centers of strategic importance. The region's ports, vital for trade and supply chains, turn into contested battlegrounds, their control essential for maintaining economic and logistical stability. The political landscape of the Pacific Northwest is equally complex. Known for its progressive and often independent spirit, the region's stance in the conflict could sway the balance of power. Will they align with federal forces, support secessionist movements, or carve out their own path? The choices made by the leadership and the populace will echo throughout the fractured nation. The abundant natural resources of the region, from timber to fisheries, add another layer of strategic importance. Control over these resources could mean the difference between survival and collapse for warring factions. As the conflict intensifies, the battle for these vital assets becomes increasingly fierce, with each side vying for dominance. Ultimately, the role of Oregon and Washington State in the Second American Civil War is a testament to the region's enduring spirit and strategic significance. As the war rages on, the Pacific Northwest stands as a critical theater, its fate intertwined with the destiny of a divided nation. The Heartland's Role The Great Plains states, often referred to as the breadbasket of America, would play a crucial role in any prolonged conflict. Whichever side they choose to support would gain a significant advantage in terms of food supply and resources. The vast open spaces of the Great Plains, from the rolling hills of Kansas to the expansive fields of Nebraska, are both a blessing and a curse. These lands provide the crucial agricultural output that sustains millions, making them a strategic linchpin in the war. However, the strategic importance of the region could also turn it into a prolonged deadlock battle line, with both sides vying for control over this critical area. The flat, open terrain, while ideal for farming, offers little natural cover, making it a theatre of relentless and brutal combat. The choices made by the Great Plains states, whether to align with federal forces, support secessionist movements, or maintain neutrality, will have far-reaching consequences. Their decision could tip the scales of the conflict, determining not only the flow of resources, but also the morale and sustainability of the warring factions. As the conflict drags on, the heartland's resilience and strategic significance come into sharp focus. The Great Plains, with their bounty and vastness, stand as both a prize and a battleground, their fate deeply intertwined with the destiny of a divided nation. The Golden State's gamble, California, the crown jewel of the United States, stands as a monumental force in the Second American Civil War. Its sheer size, booming economy, and extensive military infrastructure make it a pivotal player. Whichever side California chooses to support, if any, could potentially tip the scales of the entire conflict. Known as the world's fifth largest economy, California's financial prowess is unmatched. From Silicon Valley's tech giants to Hollywood's cultural influence, the state's economic contributions are crucial. Control over California's economy means access to unparalleled resources, innovation and funding. The tech sector, with its cutting-edge advancements, could provide a technological edge, while the entertainment industry could sway public opinion through powerful narratives. California's military bases add another layer of strategic importance. With major installations like Camp Pendleton, Edwards Air Force Base and Naval Base San Diego, the state hosts some of the nation's most critical defense infrastructure. These bases, equipped with advanced weaponry and highly trained personnel, would be fiercely contested. Control over these assets could ensure military supremacy, providing a significant advantage in the war. The state's diverse population and progressive values further complicate its role in the conflict. California has long been a leader in social and environmental movements, often setting trends that ripple across the nation. Its stance in the Civil War could influence other states and regions, potentially leading to broader alliances or deeper divisions. Will California align with federal forces, 
support secessionist movements, or chart an independent path. The choices made by its leaders and citizens will reverberate across the fractured nation. The geographical diversity of California, from its sun-soaked beaches to its towering mountains and fertile valleys, adds yet another dimension to its strategic significance. The state's varied landscapes could serve as both defensive strongholds and offensive launch points, making it a key battleground. Ultimately, California's role in the Second American Civil War is a testament to its unparalleled influence and strategic importance. As the conflict rages on, the Golden State's decisions will shape the destiny of a divided nation, its future intertwined with the fate of the entire country. Frozen Front, the Battle for the North. Alaska, a land of vast distances and unforgiving weather, would become a crucial yet isolated theater in a second American Civil War. Its strategic importance lies in its energy reserves and its proximity to Russia, a potential wild card in any national conflict. Control of Alaska's oil fields, vital to the nation's energy needs, even in peacetime, could tip the balance of power in a protracted war. Both sides would likely prioritize securing or disrupting these resources, leading to a dangerous game of cat and mouse across Alaska's frozen expanse. The vastness and unforgiving terrain of Alaska would dictate the nature of combat. Traditional large-scale battles would be impractical and costly. Instead, the conflict would likely devolve into a war of attrition, fought over pipelines, ports and air bases. Special Forces units trained for Arctic warfare would play a crucial role, conducting raids, sabotage missions and reconnaissance in a landscape as unforgiving as the enemy. The civilian population, scattered across small towns and villages, would be caught in the crossfire. Supply lines, already tenuous in peacetime, would become even more vulnerable, potentially leading to shortages of food, fuel and medical supplies. The very resilience and self-reliance of Alaskans, honed by generations of living in a harsh environment, would be put to the ultimate test. Would they side with a faction, remain neutral, or even seek to carve out their own destiny in a fractured nation? Hawaii, a chain of islands thousands of miles from the mainland, would face its own set of challenges. Its strategic value lies in its Pacific ports, serving as a vital link in supply lines and a forward operating base for naval operations. Control of Hawaii could give one side a decisive advantage in controlling the vast Pacific theater. Mountain stronghold guerrilla warfare in the Rockies. The Mountain West, with its rugged terrain, independent spirit, and abundance of natural resources, would become a hotbed of both resistance and conflict in a second American civil war. The region's complex geography, marked by towering mountains, high deserts and winding canyons, would favor defensive strategies and unconventional warfare. Wyoming, the nation's leading coal producer and a major source of natural gas, would be a prime target. Control of its energy resources could fuel a war machine, making it a strategic prize for both sides. However, securing these resources would be no easy feat. The state's sparse population and rugged terrain would lend themselves to guerrilla warfare, with small, mobile units ambushing supply lines, sabotaging infrastructure, and exploiting the landscape to their advantage. Colorado, with its mix of urban centers and rural communities, would likely experience internal conflict. Denver, a major transportation hub, and home to military installations could become a focal point of the war. Control of its airport and rail lines would be crucial for logistical operations, potentially leading to urban warfare and sieges. Meanwhile, the state's rural areas, with their strong traditions of self-reliance and gun ownership, might see the rise of local militias, defending their communities from both sides of the conflict. The Mountain West, with its history of independence and resistance, would not yield easily. The region's complex terrain and fiercely independent people would make it a difficult battleground to control, potentially dragging both sides into a protracted and costly conflict. Desert Storm Resource Wars and Border Conflicts The Southwest, a region already grappling with issues of immigration, water rights and cultural identity, would become a crucible of conflict in a second American Civil War. 
The region's long border with Mexico, its arid climate and its strategic resources would make it a flashpoint for violence and instability. Arizona and New Mexico, with their large Hispanic populations and shared history with Mexico, would likely see the most immediate impact. The border, already a militarized zone, would become even more heavily fortified with checkpoints, walls and increased patrols. The potential for human rights abuses would be high, as fear, prejudice and wartime propaganda fuel suspicion and animosity towards border communities. Water, a precious commodity in the desert, would become a weapon of war. Control of the Colorado River, which supplies water to seven states in Mexico, would be fiercely contested. Droughts, already a recurring threat, could be exacerbated by sabotage or the destruction of dams and irrigation systems, leading to humanitarian crises and fueling further conflict. Shifting sands of allegiance. As a hypothetical Second American Civil War grinds on, the initial battle lines drawn across the new states would blur, alliances shifting like the sands in the desert winds. The reasons for these shifts would be as varied as the states themselves, driven by pragmatism, desperation, or a dawning realization that the stakes of this conflict transcend old loyalties. Alaska, initially prized for its oil wealth, might find both sides unwilling to commit the resources necessary for its long-term control. The harsh reality of fighting a war in such an unforgiving environment, coupled with the potential for sabotage by a resistant population, could lead to a stalemate. This stalemate, however, would be anything but peaceful. Alaskans, their lives disrupted, their economy in tatters, might be forced to forge their own path, seeking accommodation with whichever faction offers the best terms for survival, or even exploring a future independent of a mainland in chaos. Hawaii, geographically isolated yet strategically vital, would face constant pressure to choose a side. Its people, a melting pot of cultures with strong ties to the Pacific Rim might find themselves torn between mainland factions and a growing desire for self-determination. The islands could become a haven for refugees fleeing the mainland fighting, further straining resources and inflaming tensions. The very act of choosing a side could spark internal conflict, pitting neighbour against neighbour in a struggle for the soul of paradise. The Mountain West, initially a bastion of neutrality, would find its resolve tested as the war drags on. The constant demand for resources, the influx of refugees and the spillover of violence across its borders would force hard choices. States like Wyoming, sitting on a wealth of energy resources, would face constant pressure to pick a side, their desire for self-reliance clashing with the realities of a war economy. As the hypothetical conflict grinds to a close, whether through negotiated settlement or decisive victory by one faction, the new states would find themselves forever changed. The physical scars of war, while devastating, would pale in comparison to the deep divisions etched into the soul of the nation. The very idea of union, already strained before the fighting began, would be irrevocably broken. Alaska and Hawaii, once symbols of America's reach and ambition, might emerge from the conflict deeply disillusioned with the mainland. The cost of their forced allegiance paid in blood and treasure would leave lasting resentment. The pull of independence, once a fringe idea, could gain traction, fueled by a desire to chart their own course in a world reshaped by conflict. The Mountain West, its landscape scarred by battles fought over resources, would face the daunting task of rebuilding not just infrastructure, but also trust. The war would have exposed the fragility of its neutrality, the limits of self-reliance in a world consumed by conflict. The influx of refugees, many carrying the trauma of war, would challenge the social fabric of these sparsely populated states, forcing them to confront issues of identity, belonging, and the very definition of community. The Southwest, its border transformed into a militarized zone, would grapple with the human cost of conflict. Families divided, communities shattered, and the legacy of violence would weigh heavy on the region. The war would have deepened existing social and economic fault lines, exacerbating tensions between Anglo and Hispanic communities, urban and rural populations. The dream of a harmonious multicultural society would be replaced by suspicion, resentment and the constant threat of renewed conflict.
In the aftermath of a second American Civil War, the new states, along with the rest of the nation, would be forced to confront the consequences of their choices and the enduring power of division. The war would serve as a stark reminder that the ideals of unity, liberty and justice are fragile, constantly tested by the forces of fear, greed and intolerance. The potential outcomes of such a conflict are as varied as the states themselves. Some might emerge from the wreckage relatively unscathed, their resources and strategic location affording them a degree of leverage in the post-war world. Others, bearing the brunt of the fighting or caught on the losing side, could face economic collapse, social upheaval and political instability. The most enduring lesson, however, would be the importance of dialogue, compromise and a shared commitment to the common good. The war would demonstrate the high cost of neglecting these principles, of allowing divisions to fester until they erupt in violence. It would underscore the need for empathy, understanding and a willingness to bridge the divides that separate Americans. The new states with their unique histories and perspectives would have a vital role to play in this process of healing and renewal. Their experiences, while diverse, would offer valuable insights into the forces that led to conflict and the challenges of rebuilding a fractured nation. By sharing their stories, embracing their differences and working together, these states could help forge a new path forward, one based not on the ghosts of the past, but on a shared vision of a more just and equitable future. A second American Civil War, though a hypothetical exercise, lays bare the fragility of the nation's unity, evident even more so today. The very act of imagining such a conflict, of picturing brother against brother in a struggle for the soul of America, is a stark reminder of the stakes. The new states, far from being immune to the forces of division, would find themselves on the front lines, their allegiances tested, their resources coveted, their very identities challenged. The cost of such a conflict would be immeasurable, measured not just in lives lost and cities shattered, but in the erosion of trust, the deepening of divides and the shattering of the American dream. The very notion of a United States, already strained by political polarization and social unrest, would be irrevocably broken. The disunion states of America, the new states, their unique histories and identities woven into the fabric of the nation, would be left to pick up the pieces, to grapple with the consequences of choices made and lessons learned. Washington State, Oregon and California cast with an air of forever separation from the other states. The Mountain West, its rugged independence tested by war, would bear the scars of battles fought over resources and ideology. The Southwest, its border transformed into a militarized zone, would grapple with the human cost of division, the shattered dreams of a multicultural society. Yet even in the aftermath of such a cataclysmic event, Hope would endure. For within the wreckage of war, amid the ruins of shattered dreams, lie the seeds of renewal. The very act of enduring such hardship, of confronting the darkest aspects of human nature, could spark a collective awakening, a renewed appreciation for the fragility of peace and the importance of unity. The new states, their experiences forged in the crucible of conflict, would have a vital role to play in this process of healing and rebuilding. Their stories, though diverse, would offer valuable lessons about the dangers of division, the importance of dialogue, and the enduring power of the human spirit. The rebuilding process would be long and arduous, fraught with challenges and setbacks, but it would also be an opportunity to re-examine priorities, to bridge divides, and to forge a new path forward, one based not on the ghosts of the past, but on a shared vision of a more just, equitable and united future. The lessons learned from a second American Civil War, though born of tragedy, could serve as a roadmap for a nation seeking to heal, to reconcile, and to rediscover the true meaning of unity. If you found this exploration thought-provoking, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Your support helps us continue to bring you stories that matter. Thank you for watching.